welcome to your mid-November tarot and astrology reading. We're in the transition between Scorpio season and Sagittarius season. And you know, as a mutable sign, that your sign, Sagittarius and Pisces and Gemini, all represent transitions. So there's change in the air. The ending of a season. Good time to take a bit of stock and see, particularly with this eclipse, see how you feel about your destiny. For a lot of you, especially Virgo rising, but also Virgo sun, you're probably thinking a lot about your dreams and more so how you are being recognized for them or the esteem you're being held in. Do you feel respected? Do you feel your talents are being served? Do you feel like you're influencing others? Do you feel recognized? A lot of questions to ask yourself around these eclipses because you will find the answer. Do you feel recognized? Or do you feel like just another number? Or do you feel overlooked? Those are the type of questions you should be asking. Now, your ruler Mercury, page of cups, your ruler Mercury is in Scorpio, beautiful water energy. Your ruler Mercury is in alignment with Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and Capricorn at the same time, suggesting that this eclipse could benefit you quite substantially. At the same time, Neptune going direct has a sense of nebulousness to it, as always. There's a bit of a fog. Uh, it's, costing, it's causing more of a fog over your partnerships, your one-on-one -on -one relationships. But it's still a good time to get quite romantic, to get quite creative, to get quite dreamy, to consider your future like a page of cups, you know, to write poetry, to daydream to imagine to envision because Virgos have such rich imaginations something it's just something that I don't think they get credited for it's this beautiful way of seeing the world and seeing the detail in the vision so you have this eclipse asking you oh asking you what's going on in your heart in your soul regarding your prestige, the way that you are treated in the world, how you exist. You've done a lot of work over the years in building a craft or trying to get to some point. And for a lot of you, there has been something that has felt somewhat out of reach. These eclipses over the next two years will be very big in terms of getting you to the top of the mountain, if you let it. Knight of Swords, the Chariot, the Two of Cups, Six of Swords, and the Ten of Swords. Yeah. Clarify that with the Eight of Wands, aha, and the Sun, beautiful. Okay, Seven of Cups underneath, that Neptune nebulous energy is coming through in your cards a little bit. There's a bit of drama coming up, a bit of emotional drama, dare I say, where you are trying to find... What would make you feel calm? Because you may have a tendency, depending on how the eclipse and the sun is affecting your zodiac sign, because these energies are squares after all, some point of tension, it is provoking you a little bit at home and it is provoking you a little bit in the workplace because you're a bit burnt out with certain things. Certain people are getting on your last nerves, I want to bet that it could be an air sign, an Aquarius, a Libra, Gemini, 
or even a cancer. But either way, you're feeling a bit frazzled and before you react from a point of being frazzled, connect. You know, don't withdraw, connect. The partnership card is actually in your favorite position, suggesting that the nebulousness of Neptune is providing you more with an ability to really get deep with somebody because Neptune has always ruled your relationships. And so a partner that you can get very dreamy and very lost with is actually quite good for you. Someone who can bring out that part of you. If you have a romantic relationship, they'd really like to connect with you at the moment on a deeper level. If you have a best friend, they would also really like to connect with you and spend more time with you or have a good talk with you. Maybe a Gemini friend. There's people that really want to connect with you and that will soothe your frazzled nerves for sure. The Ten of Swords as the outcome clarified by the Eight of Wands, clarified by the Sun, suggests that you have decided to let something go. And I think for a lot of you, because of this eclipse being internalised, the thing you're choosing to let go is a sense of dissatisfaction sense of heavy emotional investment in your work and you're pulling back a little bit to see how you feel rather than consistently investing all this time and all this energy into your pursuits you're just taking a little bit of time to reflect on how you feel now I want to say with that ten of swords followed by the eight of wands if around the Gemini full moon you find yourself reduced to tears over something or incredibly frustrated over something or really lashing out about something, not in a violent way, but in a rant kind of a way to someone you trust, ranting about circumstances that are not to do with them. But getting a lot of this frustration, a lot of this disappointment, a lot of this energy out It's almost like in giving up just a little bit, you allow things to move, you allow things to shift. Now Mars is still in Aries and will be there until 2021. And as we talked about before, especially if you're a Virgo rising, but also if you're a Virgo, this eighth house energy has really pulled you into some of your own secrets. It's really pulled you into some of your own frustrations, your own angers. But it's also made you really very strong. Since September, you've done some really interesting digging into what really gets you annoyed, what really burns you out, what really frustrates you, and where you think that comes from. For some of you, it's been a need to right off having a relationship because work comes first. For some of you, it's a disbelief that anybody could love you the way that you are. For some of you, it's a disbelief that you could really move up a notch and yet being pulled into that fear and seeing where it comes from because in the eighth house, we dig up the past and we see where our instincts actually are. We get to know ourselves better. You get to see the side of our personality that isn't so pretty, but is absolutely natural. And in doing that, you become very strong. So I'm sort of seeing that for you. I feel like you've really strengthened here. I feel that you've really become somebody who sees the light at the end of the tunnel in 2020 in general. There is good news coming in for you that's gonna give you happiness. That much I can see. Eight of Wands in the Sun. I think the eclipse is both cathartic emotionally and also restorative. I think it gives you a sense of perspective. I think it challenges what you know to be true about your future. It challenges you on what you know to be true about your ambition. And it challenges you on what you know to be true about how the world sees you and it's about time they saw you so ah uh, the eight of wands in the sun that just reminds me of traveling to a foreign country 
lying in the sun on a beach, drinking a beer, or a margarita, or a tap water. I would take anything. But if that is not in the cards, although I think some of you might actually be planning a trip that has been long overdue, or planning a honeymoon maybe, I think you can see the light at the end of that tunnel. And I think within the possibilities, you start to see that the time has come for some change. And the time is coming for your moment in the spotlight. So Virgo, the extended is linked below. If you want to join me there, it will go into the air signs that you could be dealing with, the water signs you could be dealing with, the fire signs and the earth signs, and it will go a little bit deeper into the cards in general. So I will see you there, Virgo. Take care.